City facilities like WHG is a family business. Started back in 1985, a frigid deck in a pub in Scotland on a Friday night, summer. Fridge packs up, he goes in. Don't worry guys, I'll fix it. He fixes the problem. It happened to be a chain of, um, of pubs and started this road, which is now a multi-billion dollar, multi-billion dollar and pound company. Once again, it's still a family business. We still run like a family business. And what is important for us is, you know, where we go and partnering with who we partner with. City facilities we started off, as I said, with one man. We're now the world's largest uh, facility management company in over 10 countries. We focus on a lot of things, facilities management, engineering, energy centers. We manage the energy for all the major retail stores. Uh, on site, we don't have to go in. We can just do it all remotely, thanks to technology. Technical procurement, IT, a whole host of stuff that we do for various of our customers. With WHG, as it was grit track of the day, I had a clear picture of what I wanted. I was brought in to manage a fleet that started off as 100 vehicles, became 200, it's now over 600. And this is all technical guys uh, in commercial, like commercial vehicles. What I wanted was somebody that could actually help me manage the fleet. I, I wasn't interested in just a data dump. I wanted to know what, where, when I micromanaged the fleet. Um, I was particularly keen on looking at the next step, having had a little bit of experience in grid track or tracking. I was looking for a partner that would work with us. And we started this business eight, 12 years ago. We started off obviously with the straightforward GPS tracking. Uh, we then looked as we progressed and things got more in, involved and we, our fleet grew. We started looking at asset tagging. The type of field that we started off as with a sole partner with Coles, we then moved into other fields. And one of the fields was requiring a lot more detailed tracking. And this went up until we got to obviously right at the end there, which is the driver tools and we'll get there. One of the things that we found with WHG was the ability to fit our vehicles wherever. Well, we are countrywide, we have a very mobile fleet. And the issue we had was we needed something done Darwin or ACT. We had to have a partner that would be able to do that. And that we found extremely useful with um, WHG because they were always available to do I don't know how they did it, but they always did it. The very important thing about, and this is, I'm speaking from a user point of view, what you've heard today was a lot of it is what they can do. But from a user point of view, what's very important is a lack of breakdown. We don't want breakdowns. We don't want any vehicles sitting, waiting for something to happen. And that's very important for a fleet that's mobile. We need it to be very proactive and we need the vehicles on the road because our business is technicians. If they're not working, we're not getting money. So that's very simple. The monitoring that I wanted uh, with us having nearly, well, actually over 4,000 sites. These are the sites which are visited on a daily basis by our field of technicians. We needed to know where they went, when they went and how they went and if they went. Also very important because of the fact that we are partnered, we have to guarantee what our performance is like. So it is very important that we have critical information. WHG system is allows us to manage this very easily and very simply by, by either personally going into the website or by reports which we get. And once again, this is not just data dump because nobody needs that. Nobody needs to get 45 reams of paper at the end of the month and say, okay, what's happening? We need stuff that is active, that stuff that can be used. I had a vision. I said to them, can you do this? Uh, no, like Dylan said earlier, not yet. Well, I want that stuff done and I want this stuff to be made available to me. And this is what drove a lot of the stuff that we have today, that my expectations were exceptionally high and I expected the partner to, to re meet, meet that. Otherwise, I'd look for another partner. The cutthroat business of retail, we can't afford to have a passenger. We needed somebody in the driver's seat and we have found that. What, no matter what I threw at them, at Jeremy, the engineer, he would just shake his head and say, okay, and he would get on with it and they would deliver. And that's vital for a company that's looking at telematics. With the telematics, as you can see, all the little red dots and the yellow dots, those are the number of vehicles in each um, main port. So it's a, it's a very wide field all over the country, different time zones. We managed to keep track of them because of the reporting, which we, we actually programmed before this we get daily reports automatically done. We get weekly reports automatically done and sent to the necessary recipients. I don't have to sit there and do it. It all get done automatically for them. And this information is used once again to manage their technicians in their field. As I said earlier, we got over 4,000 sites. 
what's important about that is every store that we manage, it's a, it's a, it's a waypoint or a geofence. Every area that we go to, because we have seven different uh, partners, they're all categorized individually. And so when a technician arrives at a site, automatically is registered as a, 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 a legitimate site or a coal site or a store. And we can use that information to look at how does a PMA work? Is his PMA too big? Is he driving too much? Is he uh, not driving enough? Uh, so what we do is we've worked out an average where we can see that on, let's take one of the brands, we know that of their month, 65% of the time they spend at home. Obviously, they're going to sleep. 8% of the time, on average, I'm talking, 8% they're driving, 23% um, at customer, 2% at the supplier, and 1% other. By using that information, we can then work out that there is some drivers. For example, we've got a guy, two guys up in uh, out um, New South Wales. They do 8,800 Ks a month on average, every month. They drive four to five hours every day. They see a store for X amount of time. That's crazy, but that's the, the nature of the animal. So by monitoring those sort of stuff, we are able to change the way our technicians go. Because if we have a technician in this area, he will only do the stores in this immediate area. He won't be going out to the far west or the far east or whatever. So PMA management for our line managers, brilliant. All right, this is where you've seen before about the reverse cameras, the 360 degree. We manage 27 grounds technicians that look after one of our partners. These guys drive, as you can see, a, a, a double axle trailer with a youth. They go around to all sides. They go to places where there are uh, school zones. They go to places where there are obviously buildings like the big shopping centers. And the problem we had was visibility. They were all complaining. We put reverse camera on the back. It didn't work. So through WHG came the 360 degree camera, which we've now fitted to all our trailers. So just to give you an idea how it is fitted. So obviously on the back of the trailer, we've got a reverse camera and going back to what was said earlier, we don't have a reverse camera in the truck and, a, and this camera, it's all one system. So we've got a reverse camera on the back, we've got at the back tailgate, we've got side cameras and all lit up on it on the dashboard with a screen, which is really brilliant. I don't think, I think this should actually, should be legislated that any trailer should have this. One of the things that, that is happening in, uh, in, in, especially Victoria, is or the ATR generally is that fringe benefit tax has become a major factor with any vehicle that is used for private use. Um, I don't have the exact numbers, but I think the standard private use allowed by the ATO is 2000 kilometers a year, which is ridiculous. So anything that's driven more than that is eligible or is taxable. So what, what we've done is we've set up another attachment which manages the vehicle. So every site they go to, they go from home to their site, it's registered as a business um, trip, goes from the, there to a cafe, that's a private trip. So we can digitally have a FPT logbook, which we can present to the ATO because the ATO is not accepting handwritten logbooks anymore. It has to be a digital and it has to be hardwired. It's not legislated through all, but, but it is known that it is coming. So businesses are going to be up for this and especially with the latest ruling now with double cabs, a double cab is destined to become a private vehicle. So the moment you've got five seats, it's no longer specifically designed as a tool of trade vehicle. A problem, we've got 600 vehicles on the road. It could be it could be 600,000 a year that we would have to pay just to cover the FPT. Now that's something we can't budget for. It's something that, that we have to bring, and this is solving the problem for us. Going another step further with our demands with WHC, they can't wait for me to retire. Um, is I want everything on the mobile phone. I want everything to work off this because this is with the technician no matter where he goes. So the FPT app is on their phone. They, it does it automatically. They can go in and check and change if there's one particular trip or anything that doesn't gel with them. And it'll produce a report that, that after 12 weeks. We also have, uh, uh, we're looking at putting QR codes on the side of a vehicle. The tech can go up. QR code, all his information, all there, we can do vehicle orders. I, I used to travel around the country doing vehicle orders on our vehicles. Obviously the vehicles are leased, we return them, they got damaged. We need to know what conditions are. I don't need that anymore. All right, one of my favorite topics, 12 years ago, and the, the same bloke, Dylan was standing there doing his speech. 
Um, I went up to him after I said, Dylan, you, you're focusing on the wrong aspect. You're looking at hijacking and vehicle theft. I said, That's, this is Australia. That'd be ridiculous. However, uh, things have changed. So we <laughs> have changed for sure. So we have, uh, have had a couple of very interesting situations. Um, that particular shot, a guy phoned up, he was at a store, next thing his vehicle's down the road. Phones me up, he says, my vehicle's just been stolen. I said, okay, on the tracker, saw where it was, phoned WHD, send the troops. 27 minutes later, it was recovered on the eastern suburbs. As you can see how much they saved us by just by actually locating vehicles that have subsequently uh, been taken without anybody's permission. Very, very important. This incident that occurred here, that is an actual report. I uh, got a phone call at 9.30 on a Sunday morning, driver saying, my vehicle's been taken out of my yard. He's got a rural property down the coast. He says, I was there, I don't know how, they got the keys. That was another discussion. Anyway, vehicle gone, full of tools now. So that's important. And also, as we know, we, we deal with, if there's a fridge we deal with the, the likes of coals. If the fridge goes down, we need the technician there right away. Otherwise they lose all the products. So very important to do that. So once again, most important thing inside here was to get the vehicle. Another area which you've, you've heard of as well today is the moving from originally 2G, where all tracking systems were, then they migrated to 3G, and now of course it's gonna to change to 4G. And this is where a lot of the smaller or other partner um, tracking companies are actually going to fall away because go to 4G and WHG have the technology to move to the new platform. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you guys for watching.